bird is a bird is a bird. Unless it's a watercolor bird and a cardinal. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. So today what I wanted to do was continue evaluating the Windsor Newton watercolor markers. And I want to do so by uh, doing a watercolor of this cardinal. Now I've lightly penciled it in uh, just to get a head start here on the video. And I'm going to be going through and showing you just some ways that I would like to use the watercolor markers or some ways that seem interesting to me. If you paint in watercolor and have no interest in these Windsor Newton watercolors, don't worry about it. Just follow along anyway if you're interested in painting birds. Uh, a lot of what we do here will be valid whether you're using brush and color or whether you're using these markers. But this is just a way for me to continue experimenting with these markers and see what we can do. Now let me see. Where is that bird reference? Oh, Reese. Thank you, buddy. So let's get started here. And I'm just going to start putting in some line technique right over the top of my drawing. This is what I'm using as a guide. And um, again, this is going to be kind of a study, a uh, fairly small painting, but I'm just trying to get some bearings on uh, some good ways to use these watercolor markers and some things that I can pass along to you. Now, my main interest in using these watercolor markers is line and wash. If you've ever used markers before, you probably know that that is the most common way to use markers. A line drawing, usually pen and ink, and then it's colored in with markers, whether it be watercolor markers or something like the alcohol-based Copic. Again, line and wash is, is most typically pen and ink, but it can also be colored pencil. This is a Prismacolor wax-based pencil. And I'm going to pay a lot of attention to the line technique. The line technique is going to carry the detail of the bird. And the watercolor markers are just going to be color. Okay, so I've got, uh, I think, a fairly nicely detailed bird there in line. And we're going to go ahead and start coloring with the marker. I also thought the cardinal would make a great way to show off the, the bright colors of the marker. If you're like me, one of the questions you probably have about the watercolor markers is how do I put down that color and control it? You've got to put the color down generally full strength right out of the marker and it's not mixed or anything. That's a little bit counterintuitive for me because I like to put colors out on a palette and mix. I love to mix my colors. Again, while I think paletting the markers is fine. I don't want to approach a whole painting that way or I might as well just pull out my regular palette of paint. And one of the tips that I see a lot and works fairly well I think with markers, especially in a line and wash technique, is begin by lining in color in the shadow areas. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm using the Alizarin Crimson marker. I'm going pretty intense in these shadow areas. Now, I'm not feeling the need to blend this all completely. I'm paying attention in my reference to where the highlights are. I'm trying not to paint over those. I've been very surprised, um, and pleasantly so, with this Windsor Newton watercolor marker paper. It does give me a lot of uh, workability on the color. You can see here that it's going to take some layering. This, this is all looking a bit pink. I need to get some redder tones in there. But right now I'm just focusing on modeling the light. Another neat thing about these markers is you, you can seemingly wet and extend the color indefinitely. I mean, I'm just continuing to wet areas that I put the marker down and continuing to paint it out. It's uh, It goes a little further, I think, even than maybe a watercolor pencil would using the same technique. And you don't have to be this tight. Um, kind of being tight intentionally just to see what I can do with it. Not only does it lift real well and blend and in a seemingly continuous, almost unending fashion, but if you just get too much pigment in an area, it blocks really well. I absolutely love layering and glazing. It's one of my favorite 
things to do. It, it takes a lot of patience, but it's just a very satisfying technique. And I'm going to do some of that here. Let's we'll see how far we can take it. I do see and understand that that you can really use this medium in a more quick and expressive fashion. But sometimes you just want to see how far you can take the medium. Pick up paint from spots that you've painted and apply it to other areas. Now, so far, I have not palleted a single color here. I'm going to attempt to do any mixing or layering right on my paper. So far, this is absolutely a blast. I'm just really enjoying it. It's looking a little more like a cardinal now with this little mask there. Ability is just very good. Take some turquoise, yellow ochre, a wash brush, and a whole lot of water. Makes for a nice cool green. So I'm just popping in some blacks in the deepest shadow areas. Basically almost just stippling them in. Give it some pop. Okay, I think for the purposes of this video, we're done. My conclusions would be, first of all, it's not a subtle medium. It is beautiful paint, vibrant, rich colors, just like their tube paints. But out of the marker, um, it's a fairly bold application. So you're dealing with that. I've overworked this piece a little bit, owing to that and my unfamiliarity with working with markers. But also because I wanted to push the medium and see how far I could take it. I do think it's better for a line and wash technique where you apply the colors fresher, looser, quicker. And as I start getting towards the end, I think it would have been better if I'd palleted some colors just for some finishing touches. But other than that, it's a really exciting medium and it's not going to be for everybody. But uh, if it looks like something you're interested in, I hope you do give them a try. If this video was a help to you, please like the video and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Because we'll certainly be doing it. And we will see you next time.